Hey guys, Happy Camper here, and uh, we're back, of course, in Better Cooler. Um, and I thought I'd do a video kind of talking about um, learning uh, to fly a helicopter in X-Plane. Kind of the process and, and how I'd recommend uh, going about it. Because uh, it can be quite a daunting experience. Uh, it was certainly difficult for me in the start. Uh, and it takes a lot of dedication. Now this video is going to be uh, kind of aimed towards the um, the people who, who are dedicated and really want to learn it. Because uh, it takes a lot of time, and and you can uh, you can do it and and just fly it uh, here and there and have fun in it, uh, but you won't be flying it that realistically if you do so. Um, now, before we get into the actual uh, talking, uh, first of all, I'm using a reshader mod. Uh, I'll leave it in the description down below, and um, and it basically just uh, adds kind of a filter on top of Explain, and it makes it look awesome. Um, I've got a colorfulness. Uh, filter uh, that comes with the mud and it looks amazing I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen it but in case anybody hasn't and uh, was wondering um, and I'm also using X-Plane 11 uh, the full version the released version not the release candidate the actual released version first video on that and it's very exciting um, and it's great I love X-Plane um, it's uh, awesome to see alright well um, Got a couple of steps here uh, on on what to remember and what to uh, to kind of uh, do when uh, when learning to fly. And of course, step one is practice. You want to be practicing. Um, I can't, I touched on 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 this in my video where I explained um, uh, I explained hovering and how to learn how to hover. And um, uh, check that out in the description if you uh, if you wanna see more about that. But a lot of it is is practicing because if you don't practice. Um, and if you're not consistent in your practicing, it's going to be uh, difficult to um, to kind of get that muscle memory because because that's what your reality um, is doing with these helicopters. You have so many random small inputs um, forces acting upon your helicopter that you have to you have to just learn by muscle memory uh, to act upon those forces to to correct for for all of these different things. Now. Um, Second thing is understanding uh, a helicopter and understanding the flight. Um, now this can be a bit more uh, challenging and you don't want to um, kind of think that you're going to go and you're going to learn all the aerodynamics and you're going to stand everything perfectly and then you're going to be able to fly a helicopter because that's just not how it works. A lot of it, as I said, is muscle memory. Uh, but understanding helps you know what to practice and it helps you practice well. So with that I mean um, you want to be practicing the good things um, and those good things uh, are going to be uh, what kind of profiles you're going to be flying, um, how your takeoffs are going to be looking, how your landings are going to be looking, how your cruise flight looks and kind of just understanding the, the, the basics of that. and. Uh, and a lot of it is, uh, it, you know, if you're having difficulties hover, um, that that can, that can get you down. So you want to get up in the air and fly around for a bit. Um, you know, you don't want to practice uh, a lot of hovering and and get that nailed down before you actually get flying. Because um, cause it, it's fun to fly, and if you just practice hovering, um, you you kind of get a bit tired and uh, exhausted. So if you're having difficulties hover, um, just get some forward airspeed. And, uh, and get out up in the air. Um, important thing about helicopters that I explained in another video as well, touched upon, is uh, you want to keep uh, your forward airspeed before you get your altitude. So if you if you're able to, if you're at an airport in a field somewhere like that, you want to get speed uh, while being fairly close to the ground, and then you want to pitch up, right? So you want to pull the nose up, and uh, basically that's going to do is you know it's going to uh, point more air downwards and less air uh, behind you, and that's just basically going to be uh, be moving you upwards. Now, uh, obviously, to fly forward, uh, you want to have your nose pointed down a little bit, and that's all. You know, it's going to push air behind you and kind of work like a, like a prop in a plane, uh, pushing air behind, which is going to move you forward. Um, so, understanding the flight uh, dynamics uh, can be quite important and. Uh, and when combining that with actual uh, flight practice, you're going to be uh, you're going to be quite golden. Um, so let's talk a bit about the kind of landing procedure because I see a lot of people 
um, doing it in, in a way that isn't preferable. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't call it bad, but it's, uh, it's bad practice. It's not something uh, you see a real life helicopter doing. It's not something you want to uh, kind of get in the habit of doing. Um, a lot of people just uh, kind of move, quickly pick the nose up, move the helicopter into into very slow flight, uh, zero airspeed, and and then just kind of fall out of the sky from there. And there's there's many emergency um, kind of really bad ideas with that, and I won't even get into that because that's uh, it's quite advanced. But there's 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 basics for a lot of crashing when doing so. So important thing is um, you want to keep airspeed until you're down by the ground, right? So so how do you get it down though? How do you get it down from, from cruise flight uh, without um, without slowing it down? Well, you simply just lower the collective. Lowering the collective is going to uh, remove some of that lift. You don't want to lower it all the way because that's going to make you uh, uh, overspeed the rotors and drop out of the sky and all these all these kind of bad, bad things can happen if you do so. Um, but you, you know, just lowering the collective enough to where you get a descent rate. Now, don't just leave the collective. Don't be afraid to move around with the collective. Be, be, um, be careful, um, and be smooth in your movements. But don't be afraid, right? So you want to move it if you, if you, you know, feel like you're going uh, too far down. Um, raise the collective a little bit, and the collective is going to be controlling your, your height when coming in. Because uh, the speed's going to be constant. If you just keep the speed constant, then uh, by adding collective, you're going to be flying up. And by lowering collective, you're going to be flying down. So you want to land this kind of like a heli uh, like a plane. And uh, when you then get closer to the ground, you can uh, pitch up and then add collective. Now, add collective might seem a bit weird because obviously slowing... <coughs> Sorry, lowering collective um, <coughs> would... Uh, make you go slower um, but when you're down by the ground you want to get that lift because otherwise you're going to have uh, no lift to keep you up and you're going to be uh, falling out of the sky in no time sorry about that i've uh, i've got the flu so sorry about that the uh, weird voice at the end and yes so um coming down to the ground you want to uh, add collective because even though you want to slow down you don't want to be going into the ground right so you, so don't be afraid to add collective if you feel like you're, you're descending too fast um you want to just add that collective uh, slowly um, and steadily, but not being afraid of it, and just uh, add it enough to where uh, you're not descending anymore. Because when, when you're not descending anymore, you can kind of just uh, keep the helicopter level and you're going to slow down slowly, or you can uh, move the nose up um, and that's going to gonna make you uh, slow down as well. Now, what you're kind of going to have to understand is if you're, you know, right now I've got enough power to keep me level. If I nose up, I'm going to be going up. So if you're going to be moving any kind of stuff with your cyclic while at slow speeds or low altitudes, you want to keep your, keep your altitude, um, you're going to have to adjust the collective um, according to that. So if you want to slow down, you're going to have to lower the collective just a little bit, just enough to keep your level. Um, or to the point where you're not ascending or descending, um, and that's kind of the 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 art and the um, the uh, difficulties uh, about the landing part. It is managing your collective and and your pitch, um, which correlates to uh, managing your altitude and your speed. Um, now, and it's it's not it's not necessarily in a plane where uh, where you might be be thinking um, the pitch controls your uh, altitude and the power your throttle controls the speed because uh, in a helicopter it's it's not divided like that it's all a fluent kind of motion that you need to to understand now a thing that i really want to show you i'll do a landing and i'll show you how to see um where my collective is so in this right so we've got the manifold pressure uh, written or measured in inch, inches. You might know this from, from uh, planes. A lot of kind of prop planes have that. Uh, it's a gauge right here. <clears throat> now, if I have the collective all the way down, as it is right now, it's just above 10. Uh, but if I'm flying, you know, full power as much as I can, it's going to be uh, just above, uh, just below 30. That's as much as I can pull, right around 30. Um, so I'll show you um, a profile uh, about where you land. Uh, where you come in for an approach, 
uh, just a final bit and keep an eye on that on that gauge um, when when cruising I like to keep it around 25 inches of manifold pressure so I'll, I'll get up to that and I'll get just a little bit of altitude and I'll kind of uh, start slowing the helicopter down and uh, and bring it down now collective keeps uh, fairly steady on the approach in uh, only lowering and adding a bit of collective to keep you on the glide path um, but when you then get to the ground, as I explained, you want to add that collective to not slam into the ground, right? So don't be afraid of adding the collective, even if that means you keep speed, uh, add that collective. Um, so, so coming in here, you can see collective's going down. It's not all the way down now, right now. It's, uh, it's quite far down, but not all the way. And I've got the nose pointed down a little bit, so I'm keeping about 40 knots here. Uh, coming down, I'm descending uh, just above 1,000 feet a minute, which uh, is, is quite fine. So we come down, and I'm going to pitch up. I'm going to add add that uh, collective in. See me adding that collective in while I pitch up. That's going to slow me down, but keep me fairly steady. Now I add a lot of collective to keep in the hover. Right? So this is going to be different depending on your density, your height, all that kind of stuff, but um, and your weight, of course. Um, but you're going to be adding collective when you get to the bottom um, of your uh, approach uh, to make sure that you can get into that hover and, uh, and safely land. So I hope that video has helped. Um, if it did, let me know. If you have any questions, please let me know. It's always awesome to see your feedback and see your questions in the comment. Uh, don't hesitate. And, um, and yeah, if you like the video, give it a like. Uh, always awesome to see as well. And uh, until the next video, guys, take care.